I lie awake at night and think of a tree. Along each branch sits a different member of my family. I find my grandfather there, my three uncles, my mother. I continue upwards. I watch my arms for movement as I climb, and I look for my own face. Twice I turn my back on you. I wonder if I'll never have children. I fell flat out of the fear on my face, of but it didn't lose. The benefits to science of the genome project are clear. Illnesses such as manic depression, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, heart disease are probably all multigenic and even more difficult to unravel than cystic fibrosis. Yet these diseases are at the root of many current societal problems. The cost of mental illness, the difficult civil liberties problems they cause, the pain to the individual, all cry out for an early solution that involves prevention, not caretaking. To continue the current warehousing or neglect of these people, many of whom are in the ranks of the homeless, of the homeless. Is, the of is the equivalent of providing iron lungs to polio victims at the expense of working on a vaccine? So, what you just witnessed was a really unique, site-specific, interactive performance that we made well, while we... Actually, what you just witnessed was a creative collaboration between students of science and students of art that made a science lab come to life. Well, what I heard was that was a way to uh, educate the general public about genetics. Guys, it turns out you're all right. What you just watched uh, was video footage from a production, a theater production that we developed this past year at Harvard University called The Edge of the Map. The Edge of the Map was developed in collaboration between science and theater students at Harvard University and also professional artists with the company Sightline Productions. My name is Cala Vedette and I graduated from Harvard in 2009. In 2010, I founded Sightline, which is a producing organization committed to creating interdisciplinary performance works. Uh, we are now uh, developing a new educational initiative uh, that will work with scientists and students to incubate uh, new works about genetics and health. I'm the creative director of Sightline. My name is Lauren Rayner. I am the producing director of Sightline. I am also a professional producer for stage and film based in New York City. And <clears throat> my name is Mary Alpati. I'm a rising senior at Harvard College, and I'm also serving as the collaborations director with Sightline Productions. And I'm personally very interested in facilitating these interactions between um, scientific education and the performing arts. And my name is Ben Morris. I graduated from Harvard College in 2009 with Kala. I am now a PhD candidate in the bio and biomedical sciences program at Harvard Medical School. And with Sightline Productions, I am the educational programs director uh, in this role, I'm going to be working very closely with our, our last team member, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, Professor uh, John Beckwith. John uh, will serve as the scientific director for Sightline Productions uh, and really brings a, a range of experience to the team uh, in his long and uh, uh, really uh, significant career. Uh, he's both done seminal work in bacterial genetics research in his lab, but he's also been very active as a social activist in uh, speaking out about social issues regarding uh, genetics research, um, and has also been a really terrific educator. Uh, he started teaching in 1983 a class called Social Issues in Biology, which at the time was one of the first classes of its kind. And this was the class that we this semester collaborated with for the production of uh, The Edge of the Map. So let's talk a little bit further about the edge of the map. Uh, you saw the video earlier in this presentation. Um, as an artist, what I found really compelling about the process of creating this work was the access that I had personally to scientists like Professor John Beckwith and Ben Morris, who were really able to lend their scientific expertise to the project and enable us as artists to translate that into a new artistic medium. From my perspective, and that of uh, Professor John Beckwith, uh, as scientists, we had this really unique opportunity to think about different and unique ways to think about and talk about scientific issues that John has traditionally taught in his class. 
Now, this is something that's going to be particularly relevant as we look to the future of, of healthcare. Um, in the context of the edge of the map, which was about genetics and identity, um, it really pro provided a unique opportunity to talk about issues that, uh, scientific issues that are becoming more and more uh, relevant for people in terms of navigating the healthcare system. Um, and this was really a cool opportunity to communicate about some of these scientific issues. And for me, who's a student who's both interested in the sciences, but was also one of the cast members of the Edge of the Map, I really got to experience firsthand how a collaboration of this sort can allow students of both science and theater to integrate with each other on a deeper level. Um, for example, the students in the microbiology class were allowed to contribute to this artistic project that actually dealt with content that mattered to them. And simultaneously, students who were involved with the theatrical production got to contribute to something that was brand new, aesthetically interesting, and socially relevant. And as a producer, what I'm specifically interested in is broadening our audience base and our market while also integrating these artistic uh, new themes with, uh, with science. And uh, we've noticed in our po uh, post-show surveys for the Edge of the Map that our audiences are reflecting this. Our audiences mostly consisted of academics, scientists, and also traditional theater goers, which is actually not representative of a normal sightline production. We're very excited about this. Uh, another thing that I am also particularly interested in is cultivating uh, meaningful relationships with universities, and we already have uh, talks going with Columbia Medical School. As Lauren mentioned, uh, in the experience of producing The Edge of the Map, we were able to get a lot of feedback from audience members, uh, and we were actually really encouraged that they highlighted some of the goals that we really wished to, uh, to achieve. Um, so very common things that people mentioned were that this was thought-provoking, it made them think about uh, genetics issues in a new, interesting way, um, that it highlighted emotional elements and uh, sort of some of those issues as well, um, and also that it just sort of made this engaging and exciting um, in a way that uh, people hadn't necessarily experienced before. Now, coming out of that, uh, we uh, are asking the question of, you know, what is the need that this kind of work can really fill? Uh, this last semester, we had the opportunity to talk to a genetics professor at Harvard Medical School, Ting Wu, who also happens to be the director of the Personal Genetics Education Project. Um, and according to Professor Wu, uh, the average person has only 15 minutes of their life to learn about genetics. You know, th and this, you know, this quote and this statistic is something that, that really motivates us and I think is really a call to action to think about new uh, and interesting and innovative ways to think about educating and reaching out to the public to communicate about scientific issues such as genetics. As we think about our needs, there are really three areas that we as a company are focusing on. Educational impact, scientific impact, uh, and artistic impact. So from an educational perspective, um, we're really interested uh, in finding collaborative interdisciplinary uh, opportunities in a university setting. Now this is something we were able to model very successfully at Harvard. Um, we think there's been a great a lev level of interest at Harvard for this kind of work, but we also think this is something that uh, we're seeing across the country um, with universities everywhere, where there's really sort of an interest in developing um, interdisciplinary ties between classes that don't necessarily communicate all the time. In terms of scientific thinking, as we've mentioned, um, there's really a great need to come up with new ways to entertain and educate people about scientific issues um, in the context of the kinds of projects Sightline is focusing on right now, our focus is on health and medicine, where we think there's really a growing need for individuals to have access to, to really cutting edge research to understand what kinds, of, you know, what, what kinds of options and scientific knowledge is really out there that informs their healthcare decisions. In terms of artistic impact and artistic needs, there's really three ways that we're thinking about this. Uh, first of all, as Kala mentioned before, this kind of collaboration is a really great opportunity for scientists, uh, well, for artists to have access to scientific material and insight and to really learn about these complex issues. In the case of the edge of the map, uh, which dealt with uh, genetics and, and uh, identity, um, this is obviously a very rich scientific but also uh, sort of uh, artistic uh, realm. Second of all, as Lauren was saying, uh, artistically, this gives us access to new communities who might not think of themselves as theater going or arts uh, interested in the arts otherwise. Uh, and finally, uh, a very important part of how we're thinking about this is to develop a sustainable funding model for the production of artistic uh, creative works. Now, in the context of this pitch, uh, we have a process that we're going to model after the, what we did this semester with the edge of the map. 
um, going forward uh, with new collaborators. Um, and you know, while this process is somewhat flexible, these are, this is approximately out, the outline we want to follow. So the first step is to find interested collaborators. And we're focusing on universities and medical schools where we think they would share some of our interests. Second of all, we would begin to facilitate a dialogue with scientists about some uh, really interesting and, uh, and sort of complex issue, scientific issue that would be interesting from an artistic standpoint as well. And this is something that we could do curricularly or extracurricularly in terms of those dialogues. Uh, third, we would want to find, uh, when possible, uh, sort of student artist communities where we could uh, engage and mentor them in terms of engaging with the scientific content to produce original scientifically relevant work. And finally, after incubation and performance in the university context, we have the, the great fortune to be able to work with the professional production team of Sightline to uh, look for professional performance opportunities for these works that incubated at a university. So as I mentioned, a key part of, uh, of our organizational model is financial sustainability. And we have, great, uh, we have great excitement about this. We really think our model uh, is going to be attractive in this way. Uh, mainly based on our experiences at Harvard, where we were able to raise this last year $16,000 from a wide range of funding sources across uh, Harvard University. Um, these ranged from arts to science groups. Um, and our main funding, which came from the Office for the Arts, the Provostial Fund for the Arts and the Humanities, and the Elson Family Fund, which is interested in, in incorporating creative elements into non-traditionally creative classes, in this case John Beckwith's uh, science class, um, really demonstrates the range of interests that we have, uh, that we were able to gain for the project that we had. In terms of sustainability, uh, we think this is something that isn't just relevant at Harvard. Uh, you know, if you look around the country, there are a couple of other, um, there are a, a, a couple of other examples. Um, just highlighting two, um, Alan Alda uh, and the Center for Communicating Science uh, at Stony Brook University is thinking about innovative ways to communicate about public to a wide audience, uh, about science to a wide audience. Uh, and a, a theater artist, Anna DeVere Smith, was able to uh, get significant support for first a residency at Yale Medical School, where she was able to develop an original piece about healthcare and medicine, uh, but then also going around the country to find support for performance of this work. Now, in our own experience, we've uh, we've already had the opportunity to develop on the success of the edge of the map. And as, as uh, Lauren mentioned, we're already in the works using the $5,000 we were awarded from being named finalists for the President's Challenge to develop a pro uh, collaboration this summer with the Program for Narrative Medicine at Columbia Medical School to take the student artists, uh, the student actors from Harvard to New York to produce uh, and perform a, pr a workshop and then production of the edge of the map. Now, uh, the other side of funding is we also think uh, that we can develop a diversified uh, funding sources uh, for the kind of project that we have in mind. A big part of that would come from fees from universities. We think based on our experience at Harvard, we could ask for about $15,000. Um, the goal here would be to keep costs down for the university. Um, and uh, we think within a year or two, we uh, have the infrastructure and the ability to build up to about three projects a year. Um, and uh, we think we would supplement uh, the fees from universities with ticket sales. We think we could earn about $30,000 a year for this. Um, and then supplementing this with individual donors and grants from organizations such as the Sloan Foundation, which supports science theater uh, initiatives, um, and also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, and one thing that we'd like to point out is that uh, traditional arts groups, nonprofit arts groups, traditionally rely heavily on grants and individual donors. And we think this diversified funding source is something that's exciting about our model. Now, another key thing about uh, why we think what we have, that we have a really great platform for success is the range of experience that we bring to this team. As I mentioned, Dr. John Beckwith is really a, a legend in both, uh, both for his, uh, his genetics research, but also for his social outreach and as an educator. Um, and of course, Sightline Productions has been for the last three years producing and developing uh, professional works. And we want to build on their expertise uh, to develop uh, and build these, these relationships going forward and develop uh, new frontiers for work that we can create. Thank you so much. We are Sightline Productions. On behalf of the four of us who spoke today and also everyone else who's been involved in Sightline and will continue to be involved, uh, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, with the support of the President's Challenge, we would be able to take uh, the edge of the map to new communities with Columbia Medical School for an extended, uh, for an extended residency and further development. 
and hopefully build towards future impactful projects like the one that we were able to do this semester. Thank you. Thank you.